Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Revelry, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Monday the 11th of July, 2016, and this is episode 187, Packing. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. Um, I just did an update this morning, posted on YouTube. It will probably be, if you're looking at it chronologically, well, it will definitely be posted before 186, but that's how my week went. So, it was a really busy week. I'm not going to talk about it. Again, just go watch that two-minute clip. It's called um, Quick Life Update. I fully finished the lighthouse. So, I took the inner hoop and stitched the, um, the Ada around it. And then I took this red and white gingham type fabric. It says Christmas 2016 and then it has my little initial right here. So I took that and it was actually an old dress of Mara's. And then I stitched around about halfway up the, the hoop and then I popped it in the hoop and uh, it's finished. So that's in the hoop. I just have to tighten it and finished. So I can give that to Mary Lee and she can hang it up on her wall or not. Whatever she decides to do with it. Um, yeah, so pretty simple finishing for it. But effective and pretty, and the back is all covered, and the front looks nice. I also finished the pet blanket I was working on using the rainbow boucle. So it's not super huge, but it is sufficient. That end is woven in. I just have to clip it. Too close to get it all in, maybe. Okay, well, anyway, here it is. And it is just a square, start off with eight stitches, um, knit one into one stitch, knit three into one stitch around, and then in that center stitch of the three every round, you just make three more stitches, and that makes the corners. It's pretty basic. I held the strands of yarn, which is the um, Buttercream Luxe Craft Rainbow Boucle. I held that three strands together, so like doing a Navajo ply. And uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. It's finished. I was wherever the sheep is. I was at the sheep <laughs> last week, so I didn't have very much to go. And... Um, I made this for my friend at work who bought me the yarn for my birthday because I wanted to make her something with some of the yarn and this will be perfect. She's got small dogs and a new kitten and stuff. So for one of them. On to works in progress. I have still been spinning. The mulberry silk has um, visible difference, visible progress, although not as much progress as I would like because silk is hard, yo. So I need to work on that more if I'm going to finish it by the end of the month, which is seeming not very likely today. <laughs> but we'll see. Maybe I'll get it finished by the end of the month. I also have been working on my other Tour de Fleece spinning, which is um, silk hankies that were dyed by Jenna of 716. And this is the Jewel Tones colorway, which oh, that's a better view. It's very, very bright, and I think this is, I want to say three layers of the silk on here. So I'm using my bead spindle, which spins really, really fast. Um, and again, silk is tricky because I have to pre-draft both projects before I can work with them, unlike a lot of the spinning I do, which I can pretty much spin straight from the braid. Silk takes more prep, it's a little more work, but it's beautiful and it will be worth it. So there's that. I also worked on the Mingus socks, which is by Cookie A. Um, I'm pretty sure that I did about two rounds 
on the the leg and cuff and then I started the heel flap and I didn't even make it through the whole heel flap. I make the heel flap about as long as my thumb so I'm a little over halfway down the heel flap. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just didn't pick up this project very much. Nothing wrong with it. The yarn is beautiful. It's by, let's see if I have the tag over my, my lovely bowl. Yes, I do. This is where I've been keeping my, um, my things that need to go into my knitting journal since I am not, um, not really making a project that needs to sit in a project bowl. So, um, the Mingus socks are made with Spin Monkeys Revolution Sock in the Sky Lantern colorway. And it is very beautiful. Blues and browns and, oh, I forgot to put a disclaimer, so sorry, Haley, you've now seen your Christmas present. Whatever it is, what it is. <laughs> um, it's in my Sewn by Lindsay Tetrahedron bag. Really quick, I have a project that I'm not going to show you because I'm not 100% sure where it is. It might be in my Kia, which Steve took today because his Mustang has two flat tires this morning out of nowhere. So um, it might be in there or I dropped it at the library yesterday. So I'm going to wait and see until I see if it's in my Kia. And then if it's not in my Kia, we're planning on going to the library tomorrow anyway. So I'll ask them there. Um, I also worked on the quarter three socks. So this is the Sewn by Lindsay zombie bag. It's a little project bag with a window where you can write all of your project information. And um, you guys voted on that bag. It won and the yarn that I'm using is 716 knit, 716 sock in the Heather's Special Hamsters colorway, which is, um, or Hardcore Hamsters, whatever, Heather's Special. It's, it is the colorway. Everybody wants petrified hamsters and then they don't know what to do with them. I think that's the quote, um, with black stripes. So here are my socks and they're not exactly matching. One of them is about a round and a half on the toe, a round and a half more stitches, but that equals out to only about three quarters of a round on the actual body part of the foot. And you can see I'm doing a little bit of a, a pattern. It's a really cool free pattern on Ravelry. Um, it's from Lollipop. I don't remember the name and I didn't look it up, but it'll be on the bottom of the screen right here, right now. And it's super simple. It's, um, it's one of those ones where you do it at the color change, not necessarily at the beginning of the round. So that makes it easy and it's super memorizable. So I looked at it once, did the repeat one time because only one color stripe change that I did it on. I didn't do it on the toe because awkward fitting and stuff sometimes when you mess with that. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. It gives it just enough of something. It's not that I couldn't make vanilla socks, but I make a lot of tube socks that are basically vanilla. I mean, eventually they have ribbing, but I would rather make cool, fun socks for myself, like fun patterns, because there are so many great patterns out there and so many great designers. Why not? This is not to say I won't ever make myself vanilla socks, because it could happen. But for now, I wanted to do a fun pattern. And um, I will, when I get to the heels, I'm going to just use some black yarn and probably do just a fish lips kiss heel and throw it in, but wherever they land, that way I don't have to worry about messing up the striping pattern on the front. And as always, socks are knit on size one 2.25 millimeter needles. But yeah, I love these so much. 
it was, I didn't cast these on until this weekend, even though I was like, oh, I'll probably cast these on a few days after recording last week. Well, I didn't cast them on until this weekend, and it was just a nice, like, it's been a rough week. Let's start a new beautiful project. My glasses, I need to fix the legs on these. Are these driving you crazy? And I can't remember which way I need to tilt them so that I don't look super crazy. <sighs> I need new glasses I want, is what it is, but not yet. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm super enjoying this project and how can you not love this colorway? If you ever get a chance to buy yarn from Jenna, get hamsters. In, I don't know if she'll do self-striping hamsters again, but if you just see hamsters, it's a speckle color. It's gorgeous. I love it. I have a sweater. I also worked on the Twilight Silhouette cross stitch, so that is what it's going to look like when it's finished. And I made pretty good progress on this. Several days I did two strands instead of one strand. Like I do one in the morning before anything and then at the end of the night after work or something I do another strand just a few days but it's so exciting it's starting to look like something that's the little oh, that is the little fairy and there's the moon so how exciting that it doesn't just look like blobs of color and the color blending is really really pretty it's four different shades of blues and purples in the background so far. I'm really enjoying it. I'm glad I gritted out what I did. Um, I don't know if I'll grit out the rest. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'll just leap of faith it. Who knows? <laughs> I think it'll be one of those play by ear sort of things. But I'm kind of working up in the columns, like these two columns working up and then out. But I don't have a plan for it, just just continue working on it. I'm going to do it quadrant by quadrant because I'm going to do it page by page. So that's how that's going to grow. And it's obviously going to take a really long time because this is a quarter of it. And I've only made this much project progress in two weeks. So going to be a super long-term project, but I'm really, really enjoying it. I really like that Mara is like, that's going to be for me. And you know what? Of course you don't, because I didn't even know. Um, I have like six or seven cross-stitch kits that I didn't know about because I am a little bit of a hoarder. <laughs> of crafting supplies. I just am. And um, I guess the last time I went through a cross stitch phase and I made, let's see, I made some frogs. I made a thing that said happiness, which was all in half cross stitch. See, I didn't think that I had done anything in half cross stitch, but that was all in half. Um, but it wasn't counted cross stitch. It was one of the, it was like a colored grid. The frogs were counted cross stitch. And then I started an oriental lady in a robe. I don't know where that one is, but I did those. I, I, I finished those two and started the one. I must have at that time bought these other like seven. There is a panda kit, which, um, I have the instructions for and the, like the, the grid, but I don't think I have the cloth and I might have the floss, but I can always figure that out. I can find comparable matches. Um, and I think I'll make that for my sister. And then there are like three kits that are complete. And then another kit where I have the instructions, but I'm not sure whether or not I have the floss and I have a couple things that I started when I was really little, like a cross stitch that I started when my grandma taught me how to cross stitch when I was like seven or eight that I never finished, <laughs> but I have it and I could finish it. I don't have the floss that goes with it, but I can substitute. That's not a big deal because I have the picture for it and I have the chart for it. 
And then there's a needle point sampler that she had me start that I never finished. I did like a few stitches and then never worked on again, but I have all of those things. So I'm thinking that, um, that maybe the beginning of next month when I'm settling in, um, and I won't have a ton of progress on projects probably that maybe I'll show you the, the old cross stitch projects that I had and I will put those, um, those kits where I can easily access them so that I can work on them because that's kind of awesome that I still have those things and didn't know it. <sighs> anyway, back to works in progress because I'm not finished yet. I still worked on the market bag and again, a couple days I did two sets of rows instead of one set. So instead of finishing this bottom portion on the 25th, I'll finish it on like the 23rd or something so that I can start on the bigger, more fun parts. Um, yeah, it's Lily sugar and cream. Not very exciting. Don't know the colorway name. It's probably on my Ravelry somewhere. It's a market bag. And then I started a cowl because, you know, I finished the, the rug, um, the, the pet blanket, which by the way, I gave to the recipient, which is why I recorded that segment separately. And she gave, I gave her a couple because I had a couple more pet blankets that I made just at random times. Um, and I had every intention of donating to charity, but she has these dogs who like blankets. And I was like, well, you know what? This is just easier. It's more convenient. And her dogs loved them. So that's exciting. Anyway, I started a cowl and it is the, um, Buffalo crossing pattern again. So that irregular chevron but I'm using rainbow dashing. So this is what it looks like. Here's the yarn all caked up. I just couldn't not with knit with this yarn. I needed to put it on the needles right away. I wound it off and I was like, no, it's fine. I can not knit with it. And then I needed to. So I caked it up and I cast on the cowl because I love cowls. Some people are shawl people. I am a cowl person because they just stay where you put them. And, uh, and I love this pattern because it's pretty mindless. So modifications to the pattern is written. I did, um, well, I'm using a fingering to sport weight instead of a, um, instead of just a sport weight. So I went down to a size three needle because or what, it's a DK weight in the pattern. So I went down to a size three needle. The fabric is airy, but not super drapey. I mean, I guess I could have gone down to a size two and it would have been even more dense, but this will be fine. Um, I did yarn overs for the make ones again. And on the edges, I added two stitches to the beginning and the end just cause, just to make it just a little bit wider because I didn't want it to be too narrow. It fits like this. So I thought that would be a good, um, a good fit. And, oh, okay. So this is my favorite section so far where the aqua and the pink, um, barber pulled. I like a lot of them. I really like this greeny yellow and pink barber pulling. Um, I am, when I get to one of these sections where it's blue on blue, I am going to cut the yarn and put a square onto my blanket and then reattach so I can have a square on my blanket because, you know, the nice thing about this cowl is you can use up every little bit of yarn. And I don't, I don't want to use up the rainbowy part of the yarn on 
my blanket, not because it wouldn't be beautiful, but because I'd rather have that in the cowl. Because the plain solid blue square will look beautiful in my blanket too. I don't necessarily need the rainbow, um, even though I would love it. I don't know, I've just decided. <laughs> it, it has been decided that the blue is going into my blanket. So I have that much more of the yarn before I get to blue. And then I'll put a square in my blanket. And I'm really enjoying this project. It's it's easy enough to do while I'm reading. I just have to look down every once in a while to determine whether it's a um, whether I've reached the end of the repeat or not. Love it, and I'm using my needle cozy from Judy because. I did a provisional cast on, that's what the pattern calls for, and I did this one, um, Judy's Magic. I tried a couple times to do it where you just loop it around, so like a, a Turkish cast on maybe. I tried that a couple times and the needles just weren't working with me. It's just easier for me to do on larger needles. So I did Judy's Magic cast on with a double point and I'm using this to keep the double point from going anywhere and it's working perfectly. And this one, this project is being kept in the bag that Christina sewed for me, which I love. So this is going to um, go with me to work, I guess, since I can't find Kenny's sock project immediately. Although it might be in Ikea, and if it's in Ikea, then that's the one that I'm going to take into work because it's extra super mindless. And, um, I can tell you where I am on it. I just finished the stockinette portion and I am two or three rounds into that first um, ribbing section. So that's exactly where I am on those. And I'm using Peyton's Croy FX in the Cascade colors. And, um, and I use the different Peyton's Croy gray marl maybe for the toes and I'll use it for the cuffs maybe. We'll see. Oh, let me tell you about the yarn for the cowl because I should probably do that. It's the hand spun and it was Yarn Geek Fibers in the Rainbow Dashing colorway. And it totally looks like Rainbow Dash. So, super enjoying that. And that should be all of yes that is all the works in progress so i did a little bit of modular knitting i have put the hexapuffs away i just i need to take a break from them um i didn't sew any pods onto the blanket but i can always do that i'm just taking a break i did a lot of them last month like almost how many did I do last month? A bajillion. 60 something or whatever. I don't know. I figured it out on podcast last week. So if you were paying attention, then you will know. Um, I did a lot in the past, well, in the knit along time period. So I'm going to give myself a break and that's okay to take a break from long-term projects every once in a while. I did do one square on my mitered square blanket. It is the Gotham Knights colorway by Gnome Acres. And that's square number 41 on my blanket. And I did square number 82 for my barn racing square. And this is the rainbow dashing colorway. It's mostly blue. And then on the very last round, it has just the very beginning of that pink um, applied with the blue. So it's really, really pretty. I think this is my first hand spun square in that blanket. Does that sound right? I don't think I've put another square of hand spun in. How cool is that? I'm pretty excited. Yeah. I'm super excited about that. Uh, what else? Okay, so on to what I'm reading. I know it's short, but I just... I didn't have a ton of time to craft, so it is what it is. I finished Boy, Bird, Snow, which was really good. It was a retelling of Snow White, kind of. 
It was set in 1953 at the very beginning, and then it spans, um, when it starts, Snow is like six, and then when the book ends, it she is 22-ish, but she's not the main character. She's a supporting character, and a lot of it deals with um, abuse and race relations and sexual identity and all of those sorts of things. So it's really, really cool. It's um, just a, a regular novel type thing. It's not supernatural. It's not any of that. It's not young adult. It's just fiction. Um, but it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Parts of it were awful, but um, not the writing. The The writing was good the whole way through. The events were awful, but I really appreciated what it was. That's better than saying I enjoyed it. See, I say that I enjoy things, and usually it's not... I feel like that's the wrong adjective, but I say it anyway. We've had this debate before. I finished reading, well, I finished listening to Proving Guilty, which is by Jim Butcher, and um, the it's read by James Marsters via Audible, and I started White Knight, by, which is also by Jim Butcher and read by James Marsters. I'm really, really enjoying the series. I think this is book eight or nine and there are it numbers into the teens and the final book I think is supposed to come out soon like to close out the series but I am not 100% sure I could be making that up but after I finished Boy Bird Snow I picked up The Crown by Kira Cass which is book five in the selection series, which I have read all of the books in the series and the additional books that have short stories and things because I super love this book, the series, and I need to see if Kira Cass has released anything else recently because just love this series so much. She also wrote The Siren, which I also loved. Um, she's definitely on my author to watch list. Like when things come out from her, I'm like, mm, what's that? What's going on? So this follows um, the story of Edelyn, who is, she was the main character of book four. She is the daughter of the main characters in books one through three, and she goes through her own selection. And instead of being three books that go over the selection, her story is only two um, before she finds, you know, before she chooses who she's going to marry. Um, it was a little predictable, but not in a bad way just in a I know where this is going sort of way and very good and I feel like there could be a follow-up book or series and that would be okay like maybe she and her husband have children and even if it's not like a selection sort of thing I would like to know I would like a short story or some novellas or something about what happens next because I really just don't want the story to be over. So we'll see how that goes. Definitely enjoyed it. Definitely recommend this series and this author if you're into young adult. Um, the Siren was kind of supernaturally and this one is kind of um, dystopian a little bit. I really like them. And I read that book in, I don't know, three days. It's pretty short and I love it. So yeah. So I finished it yesterday and I was reading it in Barnes and Noble and I went to knitting and nobody showed up. So I was reading and, uh, 
yeah, there were almost tears in the middle of Barnes and Noble because I got so invested in the characters, which is a good thing. It's just a little embarrassing, but I was fine. There was no like sniveling, just almost thing. And then last night I picked up the Copper Gauntlet, which is by Gaunt Gauntlet. I know how to say that word. I do. I just constantly, consistently um, mess it up. Anyway, by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare, who are two of my favorite um, young adult authors. I just really, really enjoy their work. And it is the Magisterium series. It's the second book. The first one was The Iron Trial, which I very much enjoyed. It kind of reminds me of the series The Magicians or um, like a darker Harry Potter sort of thing. It's younger kids. They're early teens. Um, so definitely like early Harry Potter age, that sort of thing. And there's misadventures and all sorts of things and good versus evil and classes. Um, it's really, it's really enjoyable. And I recommend both the authors again and the series. I am only on page 74 of 260-ish. So a quarter-ish of the way through. I don't know. I can't do that math that quick today. I'm tired. Sorry. Um, so I'm not super far into it, but I already know I'm going to enjoy it because I enjoyed the first one so much. They would have to really, really let me down for me to not enjoy this book at this point. So yeah, I'm enjoying it and... I'm sure I will finish it this week and have another new book started next week to talk about. And I think that's all I have for you this week. So I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string, and I will see you next week. Bye!